Y'all, I'm so done. Finished with these skincare products. A lot of sunscreen in here, but there's also some skincare, some makeup, and some hair. So keep watching. So I hope you guys don't mind that I have on a robe because I just finished filming a fashion try on video for my other channel style with Danielle. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it for all the people that was asking me for fashion on this channel and fashion wasn't working on this channel. Now I got a separate channel so go watch it. Yeah, so try and clothes on is very hot and I could not imagine myself putting on more clothes. So here we are in this robe. So let's start with the sunscreen. Now we have a ton to cover, but I'm going to get through it relatively quickly. So let's start with these from Altruist. So this is a dermatologist brand. It is available in the UK. These were sent to me uh, with, from the homie Glow by Ramon. We did a video together talking about European sunscreen, so make sure you check that out. But these were really cool because they were kind of like a European version of the like combo sunscreen. So I have the SPF 30 here and the SPF 50. What I love about these, they're at a relatively lower price point. So I would say that they're a little bit more accessible, you know, provided you live in the UK. Otherwise you would probably have to spend a little bit more just to get it here in the US. They do feel really great on the body. They're really moisturizing. A little heavy for my face. My face, facial skin is oily. My body skin is a little bit drier. So I do prefer, you know, I don't mind like a heavier sunscreen or heavier moisturizer on my body, but just not for my face. It does take a quite a uh, bit of time to rub these in, which can be annoying if you're in a rush, but not bad. Have you tried these? Would you try these? Let me know in the comments. So next up, some Japanese sunscreens. These are the Suncut UV Perfect Milk. They call it super waterproof, but SPF 50 plus with a PA of four pluses. This is the same sunscreen, just in a uh, bigger bottle. One's in a bigger bottle. I really like this. I don't technically have a favorite sunscreen because for one, my skin's not very reactive. As long as the sunscreen is working for my oily skin for the particular season, I'm pretty much good with it. I don't really, you know, have any big preferences when it comes to sunscreen. Love these. I actually wound up using this one on my body. I've got all these sunscreens here. I need to go through them. So this went relatively quickly because I was putting it on my, you know, on my body, you know, head to toe. But I would say that it was okay on the body in the summertime. I would probably not wear this if it's like anywhere below maybe like 70 degrees, where it's like a little bit of, just a little bit of Christmas in the air because my body skin is drier than my facial skin. I needed a little bit more on the body, but for the face, I really like this. Have you tried this? Would you try it? Let me know in the comments. All right, see how we just breezing through the sunscreen? So from Walgreens, the Walgreens Sport SPF 90 spray. Now remember with sunscreen sprays, you either want to spray them in your hand and then apply them to your body. You can spray them directly to the body, but then make sure you rub them in with your hands because it's really easy to miss some spots when you just shh and then, you know, move on, right? Then I also have the SPF 100 Dry Touch. So I like these, if I was not reviewing sunscreens and skincare and stuff like that, you know, as part of what I do for a living, I would straight up just be like in the drugstore buying, especially for body. I don't particularly love these, either one of these for my face, but body sunscreens, I'm just not trying to spend a whole ton of money on. And I found that this was great for like, if I wanted to, I had a smaller bottle of this as well that I kind of kept in my bag to reapply on my body throughout the day during the summer. And then this one was really nice. It, you know, not, not a very heavy feeling sunscreen and you know, not very expensive either. It, it did the job. There's not much to say about it other than it did the job. <laughs> so have you tried any of these sunscreens from Walgreens? Let me know in the comments. Would you try it? Do you hate it? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. Next up, La Roche Posay Melton Sunscreen Milk, uh, SPF 60. This is a face and body sunscreen. For me, it was just a body sunscreen. I don't want anything this creamy anywhere near my face. If you're someone who, you know, you don't mind having something that feels a little, it's not extremely heavy, but it was just too heavy for my face. If you're someone who doesn't have that issue, then, you know, obviously you can kill two birds with one stone with this product. This, I believe, was sent to me in PR somewhere down the line. Uh, it's fragrance free. It's water resistant up to 80 minutes. So if that's something that you're looking for, you know, well, there it is. I like this. I took this with me when I went to Jamaica and I like this because it's water resistant. Now remember, water resistant does not mean waterproof. So if you take a swim, get real sweaty, 
cry profusely, <laughs> you're going to want to towel off and reapply your sunscreen. Have you tried this particular La Roche-Posay sunscreen or not? Or would you? Let me know in the comments. So next up, the Cetaphil Pro Derma Control Oil Observing Moisturizer. This is an SPF 30. I reviewed this on the channel some time ago. This one is a nice oil absorbing sunscreen. Now, what I didn't love about it, I wish they would come out with a water resistant formula because this stung my eyes till all get out. And I'm usually not someone who has that eye stinging issue when it comes to chemical sunscreens. But this one, if you're just gonna wear it to like, you know, you're wearing makeup and you're not really doing much activity throughout the day, it's fine but don't be outside sweating. Don't wear this to the gym. In my experience, at least, this may not always be an experience that's gonna happen to you, but the teeny bit of sweat and this thing was like dripping in my eyes and it was like, ah! So I actually wound up using this up on my body because you know my, my body doesn't have eyes to sting <laughs> and it's actually pretty nice on the body. I wouldn't suggest buying this just to use on your body because you get such a small amount. You're I mean, you get a lot of sunscreen here. It's four fluid ounces, but four fluid ounces is still a small amount, you know, to buy for the body where you can get something a lot bigger from like Walgreens or CVS or what have you. And, you know, it'll be a lot cheaper. But if you have facial sunscreens that you buy that aren't really like doing what they should have been doing for you, maybe try using them on your body. So that way you're at least using up the product and things aren't going to waste. So have you tried this? Would you try this? Let me know in the comments. And yet another sunscreen. So this is the Kiehl Super Fluid Daily UV Defense SPF 50 Plus. This of course again is a chemical sunscreen. Now I started out using this for my face. I like this for my face. Um, probably not my first pick for the summertime because it, it is very lightweight, but I would say that this is more of like a spring, fall, winter kind of thing for me. In the winter I'd probably layer a moisturizer on underneath, but because I had so many facial sunscreens and sunscreens do expire and I had actually run out of body sunscreen, I started using like the Cetaphil one I told you about I was using on my body. But this one I definitely used on my body because I'm like, let me just use this up. It's actually not bad on the body. It would be bad on the pockets if you wanted to use this regularly on the body because even though this does come in a bigger bottle, to me, it's like, you know, using it on your body would be a little bit too much. But again, this is something that you can do if you have some facial sunscreens that didn't work for you that maybe they can work on your body. Another sunscreen. Now here, I bought this Moroccan oil. <laughs> I bought this Moroccan oil SPF 50 sun lotion for a video that I did was, I want to say the beginning of the summer, maybe the end of spring, because you know, here's the thing, right? With me and being and liking to give you guys some variety when it comes to products, right? Not everybody's going, this is expensive. I, in my opinion, this is an expensive sunscreen. It smells really good and I loved my experience with it, but this is not something that I would buy regularly because it's just too much money to, to upkeep, right? But that's just me. There are people out there that love you know, they love a product like this. They don't mind spending the money on it. And I want to be able to provide you guys with variety here because there's a lot of us here with different budgets, different lifestyles, different tastes, different everything. But if you're someone who doesn't mind spending the money, I did really enjoy the sunscreen. It has like this, like Moroccan oil products have this like really nice uh, smell to them. This one is just like, oh my God, it's almost like vanilla with brown sugar kind of like, like kind of smell to it. It smells really good. Even though there's nothing in this, I can still, well, maybe there is a little something in here. You can still smell it. So if, if having an old factory, a grand old factory experience is important to you and you don't mind spending the money, then this might be a nice one. Have you tried it? Would you try it? Let me know in the comments. All right, now let's get into some other skincare products that I have finished. These are two cleansers that you probably heard me talk about a lot. So the Ulla Henriksen Truth Juice Daily Cleanser. This was a fave of mine for quite some time since it came out. Uh, the only reason why I stopped using it is because I was like, girl, you gotta have other things to talk about. So this I like because it kind of gives you that double cleanse step in one step. So this was good enough to remove my makeup and cleanse my skin in one step. So I really enjoyed it for that. And then the Paula's Choice Hydrating Gel to Cream Cleanser. This is a really gentle cleanser. I feel like people think that, well, both of them are really gentle cleansers. I feel like people feel as if your cleanser should leave your skin squeaky clean. 
and that could lead to a skin barrier issue. So don't be doing that too much. This is really gentle. I love that it has like a nice, like you get a really nice sensory experience with a cleanser like this. It, it's not something that is like, oh my God, wow. But I enjoyed using this cleanser so much so that I rebought it after I finished this. So if you've tried this, or would you try this? You know, let me know your thoughts either way in the comments. Next up, the Olay Luminous Micellar Water. They don't even sell this anymore. When I figured out that this was going to be something that they were <laughs> gonna stop making, I, 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 you know, I kind of backstopped on a couple of them. But what I love about this, there's nothing really like remarkable about the formulation here. Uh, to me, a micellar water is a micellar water, unless like it's got some like really crazy fragrance in it that I can't, my nose can't stand. But what I loved about this was that it had the pump so that it made it really easy to dispense for a klutz like myself. So I've got one more bottle left that I'm gonna be like <laughs> using sparingly. Do you use micellar water in your routine? Let me know in the comments. The way I use a micellar water is like a day like today where, well, maybe not. I'm not really worried about my edges too tough because you know, my hair, I have my hair worn in its natural state and a little water around the edges isn't gonna kill me. But if I have like a slick down hairstyle where I'm not trying to interrupt my edges, what I'll do is I'll double cleanse. So I'll take an oil cleanser to remove my makeup, follow with a gel cleanser. And then sometimes because I'm being very careful not to be splashing water up, sometimes there may be a little bit of makeup still remaining around my edges. So I'll just take a cotton pad and a micellar water and then I can gently remove that without interfering with my edges. Not something I do often because it's not often I worry about my edges, but just a little something, something that I do. So let me know if you use micellar water in your routine or not. Next up in products that I have finished, the Hyper Skin Hyper Clear Brightening Serum. I actually know and love the founder of this brand and happy to say that this brand is now also sold at Sephora. So I will leave a link below where you can check it out. So this has vitamin C and the form of vitamin C in here is 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which is a stable form of vitamin C. It also has hyaluronic acid. It also has kojic acid, alpha arbutin, vitamin E, turmeric. I will link it below so you can check out the ingredients, but there are a lot of ingredients in here that help to brighten and even the skin tone. So when I was trying this out, I tried it out to kind of see like how the product worked and meshed with my other products. And you know, it meshed really nicely. But for me, it wasn't really that I was looking for big results. It, for me, when I use certain products, it's more of like a preventative measure, but there are some really amazing ingredients in here that help with brightening and evening the skin tone. If you have tried Hyper Skin before, let me know in the comments, would you or would you not? Whatever your experience is, let me know in the comments. I feel like I can't do an empty video without including these, but let me just tell you, there will be a time where I have an empty video that these aren't, aren't included because I go through them so quickly that sometimes I forget and just throw them in the trash <laughs> without, without keeping the empty to show it for the video. But these are the Ulta Beauty Juice Infused Lip Oils. I really love these. I like to grab them when they're like, buy one, get one 50% uh, off at Ulta. They're like nine bucks each, you know, without the sale. But you know, if you're able to get two for, you know, a good deal, why not? I've been using these for quite some time. I had moved on from, I don't know if I moved on to these immediately after I stopped using the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I felt was kind of like, it's just stopped working for me after a bit. We talked about that more in my overhyped part two skincare product video, so check that out. But I use these pretty often. After I brush my teeth, I put it on so that my lips don't dry out. I put these on before bed. I put these on before I apply my makeup and maybe I you know, do a little something like this before I put my lip color on. So, or if I'm wearing a gloss, I just put the gloss right on top. But these feel so amazing on my lips. If you have tried these, let me know your thoughts or if you would like to try them, let me know if you're gonna try it in the comments. Makeup, now. Don't have a ton of makeup <laughs> empties here because my stash is relatively small. I'm not buying as much makeup as I used to in the past. I know some of you guys are asking for like makeup content on this channel and I don't know, sometimes I'm scared to do anything that veers off of skincare now because like it just, the drop in the views, it's just like, wow. Anyway, I finished out two of these cover effects. There's still a little bit of product in here. I probably still kind of go in there and, and, you know, get the rest of the product out. But these 
are the cover effects. This is the pressed mineral powder in the shade N120, which I use to set my contour. And then this is the cream, total cover cream foundation in N120, which I, you know, I put the contour, the cream on, and then I set the cream with the powder. I have been a cover effects stand for quite some time. Um, their total cover cream foundation is beautiful. I have a lot of foundations that I really like and I do try to, you know, depending on my mood and what look I'm going for, I may switch things out, but I really love the cover effects, total cover cream. Uh, it's, it sounds like when you hear cream, you're like, Oh, not for my oily skin, but I've actually been able to wear the total cover cream in the summertime. I even wore it during Trinidad carnival where I was playing mass and my skin, my makeup still held up throughout the day. Cover effects has some really great products. I, I was sad to see that they left Sephora. I know you can get them in Ulta and of course you can get them from the cover effects website, but if you're looking for a foundation or a concealer or anything like that, check out Cover FX because it's a brand that I really love that I feel like doesn't get any hype. Like, <laughs> I feel like it's just like me and maybe like three other people who really talk about Cover FX. So check them out. Let me know your thoughts on the brand in the comments. Now, before we move on to before we move on to body skincare products, let's quickly talk about hair. I finished two of these head and shoulders for the blacks. <laughs> Royal Oils Daily Moisture Scalp Cream. I, I think in almost every MTV I've done, I've probably had one of these in there. Now I don't finish all of these products at the same time. I just hold on to the empties, you know, so I can do a video like this. But these have been, since this came out, I don't even remember what year it came out. Did it come out in 2019 or 2018? I don't know. But from the minute it came out, I did a campaign with them. I probably did two campaigns with them. And I have not stopped using this since. So the thing is, a lot of us and scalp is a great extension of skincare as well because you know you have to have a healthy scalp to have healthy hair and whatnot but a lot of us think that like oh you know no it's just product build up oh no i just have a you know a little little itchy scalp you know it's just a little itchy scalp and it's like no boo, you got dandruff right and the thing is a lot of the stuff that we do thinking that we are you know trying to do stuff to the dandruff actually makes it worse. Like there are a lot of oils that you shouldn't be putting in your hair because it can actually, it's almost like it's feeding the dandruff. The dandruff's like, mm, 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 now I'm gonna multiply. <laughs> so these actually contain something called uh, zinc pyrithicone or ZPT that is a known fighter for uh, getting rid of dandruff. But it also has a lot of like moisturizing ingredients in here so that it doesn't dry out, you know, kinky, curly, hair textures because you know we do need our moisture darling so this has been a fave of mine i usually use this after i've washed my hair because my hair tends to be a little itchy after i wash it i put this in and you know section my hair and put it on my scalp also if i'm wearing certain hairstyles like if i have braids or back when i had the locks and things like that those you know tend to be hairstyles where i kind of have to use this more you could use this daily i haven't had to use this daily in a while because i feel like you since i've been using the product it's kind of decrease the itchiness that I've felt by a huge amount. So if you've tried this or you were thinking about trying it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now I mostly get my hair done at the salon, so I don't really f um, have a ton of hair products here at home, but I have been loving the Olaplex. This is the number three that I've finished here. So the number three, it helps to repair and strengthen the hair. So this is something you put on your hair before you shampoo it, you leave it on for a little bit, wash it out, and then you shampoo. I got put on to this from my hairstylist and good girlfriend, Gabrielle Corny. She uses this in my hair sometimes. So I've since been using the Olaplex three, four, five, six, and I recently got the eight, which is a moisture mask. Ask me if I've used it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember if I've used a moisture mask, but I do enjoy the, you know, using the system, the three, four, five, and the six. The three is, I would say, is like a pre-shampoo treatment. The four is a shampoo. The five is a conditioner, and the six is kind of like a leave-in sort of treatment. So I've since finished day number three. I've since gotten some bigger bottles. Olaplex doesn't really come in like huge bottles. I mean, and I got these from like a, hairstylist place because you know Gabby bought them for me with her discount and it's not it's not that much bigger but it's at least bigger than that anyway let me know your thoughts on using Olaplex in your hair in the comments now for the body Audi. now here's the thing when it, put that down first so that noise doesn't pick up on the microphone so here's the thing with body 
I had a lot of marks, scratches, bites, you name it, all over my legs. And a majority of it came from Mr. Cat Williams, my punk ass tuxedo cat, who likes to hide underneath my bed, unbeknownst to me. And then when I walk by, he attacks and, and hits my legs. I also have a tendency to bump into things a lot. When it comes to body hyperpigmentation, there are certain things that you need to be doing on a regular basis in order to be able to fade those marks, right? I turn down the water temperature in the shower. Hot water will zap your skin and it can lead to transepidermal water loss. And when your skin doesn't have that water, that hydration that it loves, it's, it dries out and dryness can lead to inflammation and that inflammation can lead to hyperpigmentation. So just go easy on the hot water. Anyway, when I get out of the shower, I towel off, the skin's still a little bit damp and then I put my moisturizer on. Now I'm not saying that these healed my hyperpigmentation, the, the discoloration I had on my legs, it's a holistic approach that you have to take to that, but it did contribute to it. So I was using the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm Intensive Repair Moisturizing Cream. This feels so good on the body. It's, it's, it's kind of thick, but it also still doesn't feel very, very heavy. This is something that I would, I would probably wouldn't use this in the summertime because I tend to sweat in the summertime and then having this and then sunscreen on top of that, I think is a little much, but you know, when it's a little cooler out, I do like this or in the summertime, I definitely use this on my body at night after I shower at night. And I also like, now this is not something that you have to go out and buy, but I'm just showing it to you because you know, I finished it, but it is a nice body moisturizer. This is the summer Fridays, summer skin nourishing body lotion. It smells amazing. This was sent to me in PR. I really enjoyed using this, but this is not something that, because I can, you know, essentially, this is probably doing a better job, but this just, the smell and the sensorial experience to me was a lot nicer, but, and this has fragrance in it. So if you're someone with very dry skin and you you tend to get irritated by things, you probably want to look for something that's fragrance free. So you probably do want to stay more on the Lipicar, La Roche-Posay kind of vibe with that. But making sure that you're putting on the right type of body moisturizer, and moisturizing while your skin is still a little bit damp is the best time for your skin to really like receive that hydration and just seal everything in. Then what I also liked and finished were these two body peels. So exfoliating is something that helps towards getting a more even skin tone, slothing off those dead skin cells. You don't wanna be too aggressive with it, especially if you have dry skin, because again, that being too aggressive with exfoliation can lead to inflammation, that can lead to more hyperpigmentation, and we don't want that. So I have finished the Pixie Beauty, this was sent to me in PR, the Glycolic Body Peel. It's like a cream texture and it's got these really small granules in it that don't feel, they don't feel harsh at all, but they also feel like maybe you could put like a, just a little bit more, but if you're someone with very gentle, sensitive skin, this might be something to, to try out first because I'm not gonna say like, yes, go use this if you have uh, sensitive skin because everyone's skin is different. So I found this to be a, a nice peel that was gentle that didn't like scratch up my body like the cat does. So I, I, I enjoyed using it while I did. It's not something that I would repurchase, but if you've tried this and whatever your thoughts were, let me know in the comments. And then this Skin Fix Glycolic Renewing Scrub. This has 7% glycolic acid and 6% lactic acid. I enjoyed using this. This is this is fragrance free. So if you're looking for a scrub that's fragrance free, the price point is a little bit uh, not my favorite price point for a body scrub, but I, I found that this did a really decent job of, you know, exfoliating the skin. It the granules in it, it has a texture that's like a more of like a mm, a lotion, a creamy lotion with some of the granules in there to exfoliate. So not bad. So if you've tried this or if you would try it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. My, my mouth is tired, I'm hungry, I'm hot still a little bit. But let me know which skincare products you have finished lately or if you have any thoughts on the ones that I talked about in the video. Everything that I talked about, if available, will be linked in the description box. So make sure you check that out. While you're in the description box, follow the links to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you know, all that stuff. Make sure you check that out and follow me on other platforms because when I'm not here on YouTube, I am elsewhere on the internet spreading my cheer. 
And I'll see you fine folks in the next one. Bye guys.